because this is another retarded thing that I saw recently. Here's our bank statement for our church. Okay. Now, first of all, I just want to I just want to point this out. This isn't just public for anyone in the world to just come and take a look at our finances. It's not. It's a private organization. Okay. But I have no problems with our church members coming and seeing how we're spending our money either. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, it's fine. There's there's nothing. There's nothing to hide here, but, but here's the thing. When people are trying to destroy a church, we're not just going to publish this for you to try to find something that may have been done by accident, that may be being done through ignorance, that, oh, wait, it shouldn't be done that way or whatever, to, for them to, to point out now and try to get you in trouble and try to destroy your church because you did something that, that wasn't the right way, but maybe it was unknowingly, right? And here's the thing. The Bible teaches us to, to, you know, judge the spirits and to judge prophets based on their fruit. And when you see someone, and I'm not, look, everyone, no one is above sin, first of all. But when you see someone doing a good work and you are there and you know the church and you know the leadership and you see the work and you're a part of the work that's being done and it's all good, you need to give people the benefit of the doubt. If there's some doubt, you're saying, well, I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. And maybe there's things that need to be addressed, but we're going to at least give them the benefit of the doubt and not just jump to conclusions and say, oh, well, look at this and this and this. And here's a perfect example. This is one of the stupid things that I saw. People can look at this, and again, this is just information, right? This is factual. This is, this is factual information right here. But how do you interpret the data? In what context? This doesn't have all the context. This is just data. This is a date, amount, and a, tra you know, a transaction. So one person could look at this and be like, let's see, Panera Bread on June 1st, 350 bucks. Oh, Panera Bread, June 1st, 100 bucks. Oh, man, Panera Bread, $28, June 1st, wow. Fud records, 300 bucks on June 1st. Oh, Bricks Wood, wood Fired Grill Pizza, June 1st, 300 bucks. Wow, Pastor Burzins must have been really hungry. He must have invited all his friends out or something and, or just ate a ton of food on June 1st because look at all these charges. Look at all this. It's all in one day. Can you believe how much, how gluttonous Pastor Burzins is for eating all this? I mean, he must have just been living high, ordering the most expensive stuff. Oh, wait, no, wait, June 1st. Maybe the reason why there's a lot of transactions on June 1st is because we had an event on June 1st. Maybe the reason why you're starting to see some things here, you know, there's a lot of reasons, here's my point, there's a lot of reasons why you can have charges on there. Just seeing charges doesn't mean anything. Now, I'll tell you this much, when it comes to our, our finances, when we get visitors come in, oftentimes, I wanna take them out to eat, and you know what? The church pays for that visit to go out and to take and be hospitable and pay for, for another person, you know, for the meal of people who come and visit. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And when people labor, like we do with the soul winning, we have drinks, we get food, when we do our soul winning events, we, we, we provide for all that stuff, we do the homeschool field trip, we do these things and provide for people. When pastors come into town, guess what? We're hospitable. As a church, collectively, we're hospitable towards them. Do you remember the camping trip? What did we do? Well, my wife got together these bins and, and, and these little food packages and all this stuff for their cabins, right? But do you think that we personally paid for all of that just out of my pocket? No, the church paid for that to be hospitable towards them. But if you go back and find the dates, when did you buy it? Oh, Pastor Burzer, are you buying this stuff for, you know? Anyone can do this and look and say, oh, well, you've got charges to Amazon. Well, what, is this all your personal stuff to Amazon? No, it's not. Now, look, I have a record of receipts for all this stuff. My point is, though, it, you know, that's, the point is if you just provide one piece of information without any other context, you can speculate all day long as to, well, what's this for? What's that for? And what's this charge for? What's that charge for? What's this, you know? And you could be have a lot of speculation, but... If you don't have any other context to that, you can't just start bringing forward ac accusations. Yeah, yeah. And you can't just be receiving accusations either 
unless there's something to actually accuse of. Now again, if there, were, if, if there was suspicion of impropriety going on in our church, then guess what? Our church would be, should be the ones that should care about that and deal with that in our church. 